Yes, sir, and welcome to the Zoe's Garden, folks. Well, we haven't visited these trees for a long time. And we've been thinking in the last few months that these have to come out in winter because little bright me decided to plant them right next to the conifers, didn't I? Have a look at this. We've got these huge conifers growing up, Leyden's green. And, uh, well, they are sucking the life out of the ground. So, But they've done well considering the condition they're in, the, the place they have. So they're way too close to the conifers, but that's just my bad. I like doing silly things. But at the end of the day, don't we all? We like to have a little bit of fun. And this is my experiment here, espaliering fruit, fruit trees. Well, this one here's a pear. Now, I haven't grafted this, but I've only trained what has grown already. If you haven't seen this segment on how to plant and, uh, and establish a espalier fruit tree, this is a formal espalier, unlike the uh, citrus trees that I've got down the other end, which are informal fan shape. We've got videos online where you can search up on trees um, on our YouTube, and I'm not sure how you'll find it on Facebook, but on YouTube you'll find how, how I established this and what you need to do to create it. But what we're here today is to have a look at them and see how they're going and see what work needs to be done to them, because we are in the summer pruning stage. You get some summer growth going on. This hasn't put on a lot of summer growth, be it all because it hasn't rained in summer. We had a lot of rain in springtime. But nevertheless, we still got some fruit on it. These are only a couple of years old, folks. We've got one, two fruit up here and a half a dozen or four or five down here as well which is really good and I'm excited but we haven't got any growth coming out here now so we are going to try and establish some new growth coming out from these sides here that's what these horizontal rails are for to establish the horizontal growth on the tree so we have an east west direction and obviously when you grow it horizontally you get better fruit more fruit coming off it now I can graft onto here different varieties that will ripen at different stages of the year. So you'll have an early, mid and late season harvesting, or I can try and force these buds to burst. Now there's different techniques in doing that, but we're not here to do that now. We're here to talk about the summer growth and training the rest of the branches if they've overgrown or stretched out too far. This is one of three that I've got here. Let's finish this one off first. And you can see it's got some new growth down the end here. It's been probably a few months already on it. It's hanging down. You don't want to, I don't want to. You can have it quite sort of semi-formal. I like it to be really neat because what I want to do with this is once it establishes its structure, like its density, the girth on these branches get thick enough, I can literally release all the tape that's holding it in place and the tree will be upright standing free of any inf uh, infrastructure like the framework that we have here. It'll hold its shape to, to the horizontal creation that I make. This one here, see how it's growing up there now? That has to be trained down there as well. So first thing we're going to do before we start training all these things down like that is go around and take off any summer growth that we see on it. It was cut here last time, I think, maybe. We're going to cut it back down to there again. So that's where I'm going to aim for at the moment. We're going to take the cut off just above there like that. And I work down to about two buds or three buds from where it's growing from. What I want that to do is, is eventually become a fruit bearing spur, like these things here that will become that. And that's exactly what's happened on the end here. So we've got that fruiting there. So it should fruit there all the time. Now this one in the back there also, cut that off, cut it nice and tight. I, I like it really tight not loose. I don't want to grow too long and lanky. Let's go down here now. We've got some more growth. See that there? That's Now have a look at this. What we've got here is it's the end of the actual branch. This is kicked upwards. Now that's going to become that's going to become a little bearing or fruit bearer for me. So we can cut it off just up there like that. Take it off there for now. Now what we're going to do is train this one here to continue its growth along the edge there so we don't prune off the end there even though we've got some buds on that hopefully that will start pushing out and we get some more growth out of that and along down the bottom one here for example see this that's way too long we don't need that there cut it back down to this part here with scaling we've got all these different little layers going on there hopefully that start to, that will start to produce some fruit as well we've got there happening and we'll get some more on this side here and again here and see the end it's actually grown past. Now it's time, this is as far as I wanted to go. This is where we're gonna cut it back and that's where we terminate these branches, right there. Don't want it to grow any further. That's all I wanted to do. So we've done all the prunes that we need to do for now and now we're gonna tape it up. So I'm using our tapener gun here. This is the old model, which works just as well as a new one. Now what I'm gonna do here is just retention this branch here. You can see the old tape that I've put in there in the past, in the past there. 
that there now was a lot looser because we were trying to bring this branch down so you can see that I haven't tightened it super tight to the actual horizontal bamboo but now that we are closer you can see the flex we got we've got more flex now we're gonna fix the tape gun oh look at that the tapes come out get that back out there shove it back in here you know it actually works a lot better when you've got glasses on so we start again there we go see we got that there now what happens is if you haven't seen one of these before you wrap it around the bamboo and the branch tight press it again staples it on okay we'll leave that on my finger for now so now we're going to do it on here grab it bring it down nice and tight wrap it around please get around there did i do it tight enough i don't think i did oh i did that's not too bad i might try a little bit tighter again and remove the old ones oh we've got plenty of yeah that's better all right now we're going to come around here and train this up like that all oh, this tape there already we might just bring this one down a bit lower too so over time you'll find that the branch will start to give a bit and you'll be able to start shaping it properly so you can bring it closer to the horizontal line that you want see i might just put one on this side as well don't mind having extra tape here and there there we are so that's better than what it was before so that's okay so let's go over here see here we've got a little bit of lift there we don't want that curve going on so let's see if we can bring that nice and tight to the bamboo oh, not tight enough i've got to go tighter than that am i doing it right oh that's not too bad there we are all right back here let's just finish this off eh? hold that down there now this one here we're gonna to have to try and do it carefully there we are have we got it yes we have beautiful that's it for now these have lost their shape folks you know these are temporary structures that i've created here so don't judge it like that it's not here forever i only here to get the shape that i need on the tree and then remove it once the tree is established let's go to the next one this is an apple here that we've got what variety is this jonathan beautiful oh, let me put this down Again, all the growth that's come out, that's a lot of growth there. We don't want that. If you don't prune it back, folks, what's going to happen? You're just going to get all this upright growth that's going to turn into a hedge. And if you want a hedge environment, great, leave it as it is. Otherwise, cut it back as I've been cutting it back. I'm going to cut it back really tight here to there. Again here, really tight. See, now we've got two forks. It's forked out here. We're only going to keep one of them, so that's going to continue growing for us over there. This one we're going to cut right back again, get rid of it. And we do the same all the way along. No need for that. That's got to get trained. We'll clean this up in a second. See this branch has grown out for us beautifully, but it's gone up to the top. So we're going to tape that down there as well. Now this is another one we've got to cut off. You saw how it was before. Well, once I finish pruning, we can have another look at it. And here too. Espali is a great way to establish more fruit trees in your garden, folks, especially those who've got courtyards, not enough room in their garden to grow, you know, a full shaped tree, like an open vase or, you know, an upright. This is a great way to get extra trees into your garden without losing a lot of garden space. And these are ideal for those little fence lines that you would otherwise grow a hedge or something like that. Why grow a hedge when you can grow a fruit tree? It doesn't have to be an apple or pear, it can be almost any variety of fruit even citrus trees and again citrus trees in the fan shape not a formal shape it takes up about 600 800 width about two and a half three meters in length like that and if you've got imagine a courtyard that's four meters by you know well, let's say five meters by six along the back no back door or anything five six and five that's 11 meters long Let's make it 12. You can have two trees on either side of spalling, side by side, and along the back another two or three. So that's four to five fruit trees in a garden bed, and you still have room to plant underneath. In this case here, I've got cooch grass growing and all sorts, of, all sorts of weeds. All right, so we're missing the horizontal here. We've got to establish another one here. I'll do that at a later stage, so we can train that down like that. We've got plenty of time because they're quite flexible there. They're still quite young that's fine now unlike the plum tree sorry the pear tree we've got no new growth coming on there which i hope it should push on here we have see this one here there's a bud that's burst there that, that can grow out for us and we're going to train that along this horizontal there and exactly opposite it is another one that's starting to grow there so we're not going to touch those we're just going to let them grow out but what we're going to do instead is cut all these other ones off that we don't want 
Did I cut that too low? See what I've done, you idiot? I didn't measure it. 30 centimetres. That's the one I should have kept, and they're the ones I should have cut off. Because this bloody thing's fallen down. <laughs> nah, that's okay. No, we'll go with that. You know what's going to end up happening? We're going to end up having another one. Oh, will we? That's a big gap there now. Oh, look at that. I'm one of about measurements, aren't I? Look at that. We've got a huge gap there. And we've got a short one here between the next one. Doesn't matter. Hopefully we'll get something bursting here and we'll grow another couple of horizontals. Have a look at this. I tied this up with the old jolly tie. Look how old it is. It's still holding together. It's starting to fray away a bit there. So if, it, you know, if I pull hard enough, it'll snap off. I'll leave it there for now. So what we're going to use is our tape tool again and work our way through it around here and shape it down to the, uh, to the horizontal. Keep it nice and tight to it. Don't worry if you sort of staple a leaf onto there as well, it's no big deal, it's not going to kill the tree. Across there, and just work our way through. Now this one's grown to the end here folks, so I'm going to have to cut that off as well. Just take the tip off and stop it from branching out any further. So that's gone, and let's just tape the edge of that so it doesn't flap around in the wind. Looking better already. Now that one there, almost cut it off didn't I? Let's tape it back down. We've got a visitor here. Hey Vader, how you going buddy? Alright, it's taken off. Not interested. And what's going on down here? Oh, we've got to cut that branch. See that one there growing up at the back? It's grown up. We don't want that to grow anymore, so let's just cut it right back down. Don't need it to be there at all. And let's just tape this as well. Oh, what did I do there? There we go, one and two. So much easier with the tape tool. Than the jolly tie. Jolly tie is great because it's soft. It's you know it's got flex in it. It doesn't. It's not abrasive. It doesn't cut into the plant, but it does take a while to work with. Whereas this one here, as you saw already, tape, squeeze, done. And we'll just tape this end down as here, here as well. There we are. <laughs> Aren't they a ball of fun? Get him, Cara. Cara. Get him. Get him. <laughs> I know, you're my girl, you're my girl. All right, get him, get him, go, get him. Not me, not me, him. Good girl, good girl. This is Kara, for those who haven't met her, and this is Vader. He just likes to torment her. All right, that's enough. Go. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. That's it, get him. <laughs> Fucking me, look at this one here. <laughs> it's Oh, the framework needs to be restructured again, I reckon. That's how long since I've come to actually play with these. We've got apples all over it. Look at these little apples here. That's fruiting now. That's going to always try a fruit there for me. I want this to grow out. <laughs> it's stopped there. This bar's fallen down. Anyway, so we've got a semi espalier going on here, folks. We've just got apples that it's weighing it down. We'll just tape this up like that. Yes, I should have taken the apples off this. But you know what? Let nature do what it does best what it loves to do, produce fruit. <laughs> you won't stay there. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven apples on this little tiny tree. Bugger me. This needs a feed, that's what it needs. It's struggling, that's all it, well it's not struggling, it just hasn't grown properly. So we've got to top all this up again, but in actual fact what I'm going to do is take these out. Come winter time, I'm going to dig these up and I might move them into the middle part there. We've got a nice open area there and espalier it between the, uh, the garden beds, the raised garden beds, and create a nice feature there. So espaliering your fruit trees, folks, another idea for you for those who haven't got space or you've run out of space, but you've got some room along the fence line, you can do it almost anywhere. It doesn't actually have to be along the fence line. And if it is, it needs to actually get lots of sunlight as well, especially the morning sunlight is what it needs the most. So think about espaliering trees if you're looking to put some more apples or pears or plums or peaches, all of them are available at your local garden centre. And speaking about garden centres, well, you know very well, our Coburg store is closing down. We've got, we've got a closing down sale going on, folks. It's been going on for the last week and a half, two weeks. We're going to run it down to the end of the month, early March. So take advantage of the huge discounts. Everything heavily discounted. If you can't get out there, you can shop online as well. So we've got a coupon code, word FEB, F-E-B, is what you use to get your discount. So it's an extra 20% off the already discounted prices. That's FasilisGarden.com. Pop down to the Coburg store, check it out, get yourself a bargain and enjoy your gardening. From Eva Silly, Maresi. Thank you.